Hi, in this video we're going to be sharing with you some proven tips on the best ways to fast track and grow a profitable property portfolio. Indeed, we'll show you some actionable tips on how to overcome challenges and most importantly show you why this is something we think is worth doing. I've consistently grown a profitable property portfolio over the last two decades. Adam's doing the same thing now. There's no magic silver bullet, it's just a series of small things and that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Jess. I'm Adam. And we're landlords as well as letting agents. We're managing and growing our own portfolios as well as those for uh, our clients as the lettings business. Um, we make videos like these to be helpful to landlords like you. Hopefully you'll find it useful and uh, we want you to be successful, earn more, have less hassle and get your time Indeed, back. So, so recently we hosted a, a live webinar uh, for some um, inner circle members of For The Landlords, that they, they've joined For The Landlords. Um, it's something we do often, just be helpful, we like to be helpful. Free um, as well. It's free. In, in the audience there was a mixture of experienced landlords and beginners and also people who hadn't even bought their first property yet. They all had one thing in common, they were feeling a little bit frustrated, they'd signed up to this webinar so they were feeling a little bit frustrated uh, with how slow their property portfolio was growing. Some were yep. struggling, struggling to get it going, some were struggling to get it going fast enough, um, all sorts of different situations but uh, yeah, one thing in common, they'd asked for some proven techniques to grow the property portfolio. What was identifying what was holding people back and then the barriers and give us some tips. So um, Adam and I, we thought about the questions yep. uh, before the before it and there were essentially four, um, four key points, four key points <clears throat> that we had to make uh, and we've broken it up for you today now into four videos. So here's what Adam and I had to say to our live audience. We'll cut to that now, hope you've enjoyed the video. Number four. Did we notice we're bang on time? Yeah, we're doing well. Well, time for some Q&A if people have popped yeah. any questions in. Um, number four, manage it right. Yeah. Manage it right. This is about keeping the momentum. Indeed. Um, you've got to maximise everything as a landlord. Um, any, any business has got slim margins, actually. I mean, every business, there's no, easy, there's no easy money in the world. No. Um, every business has got slim margins and um, if you're lax in anything you're just losing your margin mm -hmm. um, so you need to make sure that you own the right property to start with to stand any chance whatsoever and that's what point number three is about buy the right stuff you don't stand a, a cat in hell's chance if you bought a house that doesn't make money every month True. Bang, you've got you, you bought it too expensive it doesn't rent for enough and the mortgage is too high. You're screwed. You're never going to make any money. And you do see some landlords yeah. have done that. I'm, I'm, f I'm feeding this house £100 every single month. And every time the interest rates up, go up, I'm scared. Yeah. Well, horrible position to be in, but some landlords They are usually in it. find it's a, a flat they own yeah, in the, that occasion. The service charge is mm. going up or something yeah. like that. And they're, they're, they're maybe, the flats are actually becoming a bigger problem. So, I'm like, actually, I've, I've got one like this. Yeah, I've you bought it years ago, didn't you? Like this. Yeah, so I, I know if I had a portfolio of these things, mm. I would be screaming. So, I can't sell it because um, it hasn't got these cladding, thing. the cladding yet. Yeah. There's no problem with the cladding. They're just taking their time to um, get all the right certificates and fix some fire thing that didn't look that serious to me but they made a big fuss about and somebody had to walk around at night and, and pay extra money you know um expensive service charge going up value of the property going down couldn't remortgage it if i wanted to anyway and yep. the rent doesn't cover the mortgage because the mortgages are variable and i can't remortgage it so if i was a landlord yeah, yeah, with 10 of them screwed. i would be yeah. screwed it's losing me 200 pound a month I, I couldn't care less but it's one of yeah doesn't matter but yeah, some landlords made a habit. I, that, that was a house that I Definitely. Just, just happened to. In fact, having a plan, you know, you know what my plan is. My plan is to buy those two or three bedroom houses. This flat that I bought, um, in a previous life, I had other businesses and I was going up and down the M1, uh, opening up retail units. And that was like a little crash pad for Henry yeah. and I. That's why we bought it and I've never sold a house. I don't know how. I just had to keep them. So that's why we still own it. And um, that's the kind of thing that landlords who've only got one or two houses do. 
Yeah, it's yes. been, oh, that'll do. That, yeah. That's a house I practice. And it'll be a lovely little nest egg for when mm. uh, when my kids are. No, it won't. Mm. <laughs> it really, really won't. So, um, to be fair though, you mm. can't sell it right now. But when you can sell it, you'll make a profit if you yeah, wanted to, couldn't you? It'll be right, cause it will, I know. Yeah. But but um, if I had ten of those, no, I wouldn't be able to keep it. No, oh, I'd, I'd be bankrupt before I got it. Anyway, so you got to buy the right thing. We kind of got off on a, on a topic there. That was almost a rant because I'm hmm. yeah, I'm worried about it. Um, so the eight need, things then, yeah? yeah, yeah. So so I was saying you've got you've got to every business has got a slim margins. Property is no exception. Number one, you've got to make sure you buy the right stuff to stand a chance. But even with the right property, you can spoil it yeah. by poor management. And point number four is you've got to manage it right. And there are eight things to consider. Okay. We, we, we know it. I mean, I've, I've um, this is something that when you're talking about a plan with landlords, there's eight things on your mind. And when you add them up, they're, they're pretty much the only eight things that are. make a difference to your profit. So, so the first one is voids. Write these down. Mm. These are the eight things you need to consider to maximise the profits on all the property you own. So the first one is voids, and I've written another little note next to this. Um, don't rush the first tenant in after the renovation because you feel like you've had a void. So you've mm. bought a house. Um, it's point. took you three months to renovate it. That's our target, by the way, for a renovation. That's why I but use that term. Do, yeah. When we renovate an entire house, we, we, we get it wrapped up within 12 weeks. That's our plan. Now, and I've got a client at the minute who has been pestering me to get it online early. Don't do that. And you're not going to get the best tenant. It's actually a house we've turned from a three bed to a four bed. So it's, it, you want the right sort of tenant. And I've said, look, we could put it on the market with some stock images because we've got loads of pictures of finished houses. Um, but if you wait two more weeks until the carpets are in and it's being snagged, I can get really nice professional marketing photos done of the actual house itself and do a proper job of marketing it. Why rush something you've just bought all in cash, you spent a lot of money on it, and now you're worried about a two-week period mm -hmm. of something you're going to own for years and years and years. Don't rush the first tenant in. After doing all of that work to it, you might end up getting the wrong tenant the first time. That's crazy. So um, don't worry too much about the voids. But thereafter. As long as you're doing, as long as you've got a good managing agent who's putting the right tenant in, I would rather have a house stay void for three months and have some tenants fall through and fail referencing than do half a job with the referencing and move the wrong tenant in. Um, but if you've got the right house, you'll never have a lack of demand anyway. Yeah. The plan once, so Anne was talking about a new property, you purchased it, mm. don't consider that a void. Once you're, we're talking about that, managing it right, once you've got a tenant in there, a good tenant should give you notice, a good agent should ask your tenant a month before they're gonna leave or could potentially leave, are you gonna leave? And if they're not, re-sign them up. Mm. Um, and, and, and if they are, put it back on the market. Because we try, wherever possible, uh, to keep the void to under a week. So your old tenant moves out, you pre-rent, pre-let it, even while they were living there, and then... In a, yeah, in an ideal world. In, that's an ideal like world, of course. That, yeah. there, there, there's, there's tenants that um, don't keep the house in a nice enough condition so you can't show people. Um, there's tenants that... Um, Arsy about letting you in, maybe? Yeah, yeah there, 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 there's also... Some there's also applicants that you think are going to be good, but they lied to you, so they don't pass, and then you've got a bit of a void there. So, look, it, it, it kind of, um, it's not perfect, but if you're aiming for it and you've got your eye on it, your voids will be less than yeah. if you're not thinking about it. So, it's something that's always on my mind. A house has given notice. Is it on the market? Is there something we can do to get the tenant and keep the void as slow, as short as possible? 14 days, that's okay. Any more than that, I start to get a bit uncomfortable to be asking mm. questions. Mm. Um, seven days is ideal. Yeah. It can't be one or two days. I mean, yeah, it just can't. You, that, that, that's cutting things too fine. You have got to do a proper checkout and inventory. But setting yourself up, if you rush stuff, you just can't get all the work that's needed to be done done. So yep. number, number one thing, <coughs> voids. Bad debts. Bad debt. Yeah. Um, yeah. Num num number two, when you're managing it right. Uh, bad debt, arrears become bad debt. We measure arrears, really. And, um, yeah, if you have a tenant not paying you for three months, that can be the entire profit that that property mm -hmm. will make in 
a year. Yeah, maybe. It can be. You know, three or four months of void, um, uh, bad debt. Bad debt and void shows up on your on your profit and loss in exactly the same way. Mm. Money you haven't got. Um, so, yeah, what what do you do to stop a raise? I mean, we've, we've got a good raise right as a business. Have a good managing agent that, yeah, makes yeah. sure they have a good yeah. raise level, yeah. We, 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 our raise rate is 0. Point, was it 0. 0.0? It's, lo- it's low. It's low. We haven't, mm. we haven't measured that for ages because it's just that low. In percentage-wise, yeah. Percentage-wise. Yeah. I mean, we average, know what it is, but, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's there. We know mm. what the, the pound, shillings and pence are, but... Um, yeah, the average letting agent I think has a, a five to seven percent. The average Arla letting agent yeah. has a five to seven percent arrears rate. Ours is zero point zero five or something crazy. Um, all we do is, um, well, first of all, we notice. Mm. We notice. I mean, lots of agents will check the bank every some once a month. Sure. On the on the first, when if they've got all their money coming at the same time, some, yeah, regularly. But the, I think the difference between a higher rears rate and uh, a lower rears rate. And we've had it. We've had the wrong person sat in the, our, our um, tenant accounts receivable chair. We, we had another lady member. Mm. And the rears started to go up. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. only difference was it wasn't important. So when you pick up the phone to the tenant, we've got a process. There's seven contacts in seven days. The last one is a notice of intention. And then there's a section 21 on the 28th day, 21 days later than the seventh. Sounds simple, but there's... One, you've got to notice, then you've got to run the process, and you've got to follow through. You've got to be on the phone seven times, and it's not, we noticed you didn't pay your rent. Oh, okay, thank you for the update. Put your phone down, it's, and I need you to pay the rent. I mean, I've heard Emma say, yeah, okay, I'm sorry to hear that, but uh, what's your long card number? Of course, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Want, I want pay, and I'm calling you to get, get the rent. So I think that makes a big difference, because really, yep. tenants should don't, be prioritising the roof over their head. Don't be soft. Um, yeah. And then if it really comes to it and you've got to serve notice, serve notice. Done right. All right. Okay. Next one, maintenance. Maintenance. <clears throat> stay on top of it. Yeah, stay on top of it. A stitch in time saves time. Yeah. And also, your tenants look after the house better if you look after them. Yep. You know, it's your duty to do deal with any maintenance quickly, efficiently. Mm-hmm. Um, they will look after the house and they'll be a better tenant for you. If you're slow to react to maintenance, you know it's got, something's going on, you don't do it straight away consistently... They'll think you're a bad landlord, and when they eventually move out, they'll be tri- they'll be difficult. They won't let you do viewings during their notice period. Why should they? They don't feel like they owe you anything at that yeah. point. So be a good landlord. Look after the- it's your house at the end of the day. I remember speaking to one of my tenants um, after I had a roof leak. I got round there straight away. We were fixing it. I apologised to. I went and checked the work. She was there. I said, "Oh look, I'm so sorry. I'm glad we've got it sorted now." don't want you to have to have any issues. And she went, well, you need to look after your property too. Mm. I went, yeah, I know. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but right. I was just thinking of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 you do. You have to look yeah. after the house anyway. Yeah. So <coughs> when it comes to maintenance, um, a little a little bit, don't don't leak, you know, the little drip, drippy leak, attend to it quickly, it won't, the ceiling won't fall down, that kind of stuff. Uh, have a good panel of contractors as, as a business with a letting agent. So we know that if we've only got a couple of contractors to call on, you know what? Service times go down, prices go up. If mm. we've got 10 contractors to call on, so have a good bank of contractors that are tested, reliable, and you sure. will get value for money, and you'll get things done quickly. It's not hard. Um, easy to understand. Um, yeah. But maybe, maybe it's a bit well, it's simple to understand. Maybe, maybe it, it can be hard to implement. But yeah. right. um, Next one. Next is, one is really important mm, nowadays. Compliance. Yeah. yeah. So... This is, going, this, is a way to change, lose, this is a way to lose money quick. It's changing all the time as mm. well. Yeah. So, especially as the rolling out landlord licensing areas, yeah, you've got to stay compliant. Yeah, fines. At all times. Rent repayment orders. Um, mm. Refusal on mortgage. All, all, all sorts, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, yeah. Keeping things compliant, well, the, the, the worst one would be prison. Nobody got into being a landlord to go to prison. No. Um, but it happens, and it happen, it's happening more often yeah, it's one of those things where it's very easy to say it won't happen to me, but as a letting agency, we see, because we manage you know, a thousand tenancies or whatever, we see these things bouncing in all the time. Um, probably from the councils across the country, we manage across you know, lots, lots of big areas of the country, we probably get 20 letters from accounts from councils a month at the moment. And um, of course, as a letting agent now, dead easy to, you know, 
here's the gas to the girl, or mm. here's the answer to this, or yes or no, or yes, we'll do this, or we'll comply with that. Uh, whatever it is, it's easily dealt with. But if you're not got yourself set up properly, if you aren't managing things right, that will cause you a world of pain and it will cost you money. Um, rent repayment order came in recently, so we've got a landlord who we didn't manage the property at the period we're talking about, now we do, now it's compliant, now it's got a license. There's a reason they came to us. But the before, yeah. before it was, actually, do you know what? I'd say it was compliant in terms of it was a decent house, mm. nothing really wrong with it, but a few boxes hadn't been ticked. Um, there was a gas certificate, but it hadn't been given to the tenant, for example. It didn't have a license. There's a rent repayment order on that. You know, we don't see many of them. So I'm reading through the paperwork. I'm a bit interested. He's going to have to pay back nearly £17,000. That's all the profit. Yeah. For a long for, for Since a long he's owned it. Time. So compliance, it can, it can really kill you. Next one. Yeah. Maximising profits, profits. Keeping and Keeping the rent at right. market level. Big one. Yeah, really big. It impacts your remortgaging mm -hmm. massively. Um, and your profit and loss. Yeah, and if you, if you needed to sell it, mm -hmm. no landlord's going to be able to buy it from you because it's not a market level. Mm -hmm. um, you need to keep it there. Yeah. And Percentage of landlords that self-manage that have mm -hmm. their Nearly everyone. Rent, rent at the wrong level. All of them. All of them, pretty much. Almost all. Yeah. If you self-manage your property, almost certainly you... Um, are um, doing that? How's he doing that? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, almost certainly, you are. Um, yeah. Underrented. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So, uh, next one. Mortgage costs. Mortgage costs. So, so you're talking about um, what pay, specifically? Pay, just the paying too much for your yeah. mortgage. I mean, you just. You need a good broker. Reviewing it. So you, need, you need a good broker and you need You need a really be... good broker because I've seen people who have said, oh, my broker's in, told me to take out a five-year deal now. This was like maybe in the middle of last year. And I'm thinking, Oof, the rates are at the highest they're probably going to be. They're going to come down. Don't I was thinking, you know, perhaps take some advice from a different broker. You perhaps want to stay where you are for another few months, then take out a two-year fix. Maybe, I don't know. But yeah, always be um, making sure that you don't just sit on the variable after the, the fixed period's ended. I've got a really good system in place now. I, 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 had, I had quite a good system about 10 years ago, and it got a bit wayward in the intervening period just because it was, we were buying a lot. Mm. We were getting, it wasn't... The focus was buying more houses, and I wasn't focused mm. on some of the things we're talking about now. And I now know, and I've been running this good process. Charlotte, I, I, Adam can put you in touch yeah, with her. Yeah, she's great. Uh, she's really good. Got, she's got my spreadsheet on her system and um, yeah, manages things for me. And my the cost of my mortgages has come down so significantly. I can give a, that. a really quick example of something Charlotte did for me. Um, I had a, a mortgage coming up for renewal on the off the fixed rate um, in six months time. This is when they contacted me to say, just to let you know, this mortgage is up for renewal in six months. However, if you leave it five months before we start looking to apply for something, the rates will be a lot higher than they are now because we know the way it's going. If you apply for a mortgage today, we get you the offer. The offer will last six months. So we'll just set the mortgage to go through when your other one expires and you're locked into a cheap rate, and she saved me a fortune. Because yeah. the rates have gone up and up and up, but I was locked into this mortgage offer. So I could have pulled out, I mean, I'm not locked in. I, the bank could lock themselves in to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great, get a good broker. If you need a referral to a mortgage broker, I can give you one happily. You don't have to be a client first. Um, book a call with me and I'll introduce you to Charlotte. She's great. I've just realized I'm not good at the maths on it. You know, well, all the, exactly. this percentage over this and that. A good broker, Charlotte, she'll just mm. write to you and say, you need this one because yep. she's calculated that over three years and that over that, that makes that, and you're going to save 800 quid over two years. Like, well, okay, well, you've done the maths. Indeed. I don't think I, I, I could have done the maths, but I wouldn't have. No. Nah. <laughs> so the final one. De-risk yourself. Well, you so it's not the final one. Outsource it's, it's, it to a specialist. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Tax, next yeah. one, tax. You know, got to manage it right. You need and, a property yeah. accountant. Don't Jeez. use... Jeez, yeah your business accountant who does whatever he does for someone else. Yep. And then don't use your mate's mate, don't use your uncle. 
un unless they're property specialists. Yeah. Have a, like, my accountant is a property investor himself as well as being an accountant. I can introduce you to him as well. He's great. Yeah. Um, and so so you, you can definitely have, you know, we said it's a, it's a matter of slim margins. Buy the right house, you're setting yourself up for success. Manage it right, you're going to be a winner. You can still lose it at the last, uh, you know, the final hurdle by, oh, I mean, living in a 40% world and this and that, and bang, it's gone. And um, yeah, so get the right tax advice and, and you, you can keep half the profits, perhaps. You yeah, know, that significant. Um, and so, number eight. Number eight is the obvious one. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, go on. Buy another. Buy another house. Mm. If, you bought, if, you've got into, if you've got a plan, it's working. Um, you know how to buy the right houses, building your property portfolio of the right stuff. You're managing it right. Everything's going swimmingly. The one thing you can do, to, assuming you own one house, to double your profits, is to do it again. Yeah. And if you get it right, that's how you can do it. So talking about growing your portfolio at the quickest rate, the you know, keep your eye on the prize. Um, having things set up right, having that stable foundation allows you to grow. But if you don't grow, you're stuck at ones and twos. And um, well, that's yep. That's, it's, Indeed, it's fine for some people, but. If you get it, if you get things right, you should you should be aiming to get things right anyway, shouldn't you? Um, so if you want to stick at ones and twos, so. do them right. But at least ones and twos, one and two properties done the right way allows you the option to, to grow. Mm -hmm. um, Give us a like, follow, join the join the channel, join us, sign up on our on our website for thelandlords.com to our mailing list. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all, like and it, all, all the social media platforms. And. Ring the bell, oh, yeah, ring likey, that. thumbs up, all those things. It really helps us. If you're getting value out of the channel, please subscribe and show your support. Indeed.